So let's get this straight. If I have no job, no house, and only function to receive attention from men, then I'm a whore. But if Ken has no job, no house, and only functions to receive attention from Barbie, it's because Barbie's oppressing him. Brittany, Brittany, listen to me. Brittany, you're so, you're so, so close to the point, Brittany. Welcome, brothers. It's well known that women don't like to take their share of responsibility in marriage. If it fails, all the blame ends up falling on the man. In this video, a lawyer tells us how many men are unaware of their rights in divorce. We will see a few women giving toxic advice to other women, aiming to ruin their relationships. Before we go any further, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and leave us a comment. Brothers, we now have Super Chat active, so if you want to support this project, those contributions would help us a lot. Without further ado, let's begin. Carrying the mental load can look like this. Hey honey, the kids wanna go to the pool later today, but I'll be working, so I packed the pool bag and I put sunscreen on them, but I just noticed that Poppy only has like one bathing suit that fits her and she kinda outgrew the other, so we're gonna need to swing by Target and pick up another one. Hey, so I actually cleaned the whole house today and I noticed that when you got home from work, you made a snack and you left everything out in the kitchen and you sat on the couch and all the pillows are kind of knocked down and your keys and your shoes are on the floor. Do you mind just picking up after yourself so that the house stays nice for a few days? Cause I worked really hard. Hey, so the kids have a birthday party on Saturday and I got a gift and you just need to wrap it. Hey, I'm gonna run to the grocery store cause we're out of a couple key items. Hey, would you swing by the grocery store on the way home? Here's a list of the items that we need. Have you had a chance to check our calendar because there's a bunch of stuff coming up this week and I just wanna make sure we're on the same page. Brothers, here's a woman who constantly provides examples of situations that can occur in a relationship. Of course, she blames everything on the man because she is a woman who hates men, blaming everything on the patriarchy that oppresses her. Surely she's not married because just by hearing all she says, what man could tolerate this woman? Brothers, it's well known that when a man is in a relationship, not all, but most leave some tasks to the wife. Many do this because they trust their woman to help them with some things. But if in your relationship the goal is for you to be totally independent of your wife, then why get married if you will never need her? Yes, housework is hard, and if your wife works, you should also share some of the chores. But if everything that happens in that house you're going to resolve, and still, I have to provide for you because you are my wife and there's this disastrous saying that a woman should be given money, then you also become a mental burden for me and even worse, one that contributes nothing. This is why men end up leaving modern and western women because she wants you to provide for her, make her comfortable, of course, without having to bother her for anything, because you have to do your things by yourself, without generating a burden. But when she, as a woman, has a problem, you, as her man, have to solve it. More than a husband you seem like a slave. Then when this man divorces or leaves for another woman, she says he is the bad one. When you marry, and I don't mean spiritually marrying, having a marriage ceremony, I mean legally marrying. You're making changes to your rights and obligations under law. That's what you're doing. Like marriage, from a legal standpoint, what we mean when we say I got married, is a, is, a, is a state agency. It's been created by the state. Like this is a, a legal status that most people who are in it know nothing about. They, they, they just did the most legally significant thing they're ever going to do other than dying. And they have no idea what rights and obligations it created in them. And the first time they're going to get an education about it is in my office. That's crazy. When they get divorced. That's crazy. Absolutely. If you were to enter into a business deal with someone in a company, I'm very clear that you would look into all the legal laws, which ones could benefit or ruin you in that business. You would do research. But the majority of men don't do this, which is why they find themselves ruined or trapped in a bad situation when divorce comes, for never having sought advice. Brothers, don't be a fool. Remember that men marry for love women for a lifestyle. In the United States, the highest percentage of wealthy and well-off women achieve their positions through a profitable divorce. The majority of women who own a house by the age of 50 come from a divorce, while 50% of men ruined at 50 come from a disastrous divorce. So, how can you make the biggest decision of your life by chance? 
Many men have heard of a prenuptial agreement, but many don't even take the time to research it. Those who do often don't ask the woman to sign it for fear of losing her, and then they see how they pay the price for their stupidity. Brothers, protect your money, because if you're counting on someone staying with you forever with a divorce rate around 75%, then you are making a very poor financial decision in your life. Ladies, when you turn your husband down for sex, it destroys him. He doesn't think that you're just saying no to sex. He thinks you're saying no to him. We have literally heard it said that a man would rather go trim the hedges in a snow and ice storm than sleep in a bed with a woman who doesn't want him. So we may think, hey, I'm just not in the mood. What's the big deal? But for him, it is the deepest form of rejection. Now, I am not saying that that means you should just hop up and sleep with him whenever he wants. Is there a disconnect? Is there neglect? What is the reason that you are feeling like you don't want to, to be with him? That's important for you to discover. But the point of this is not to tell you what you have to do. The point of it is to just inform you that when you say no, the rejection cuts him deeper than I think we as women could ever imagine. This woman is absolutely right. A woman who denies intimacy to her husband is clearly telling him that she doesn't love him. If something is lacking in your relationship, you could communicate about it. But if you are bluntly told no, then you are being rejected. I once saw a video where a man would put a dollar in a piggy bank for his wife every time they were intimate in a year. He planned to buy her a gift with the money. In a whole year, he could only afford to buy her the cheapest hamburger from McDonald's. You can imagine that there was everything in that house except action. This is not just in that house. It's almost all marriages. Men say that if they had imagined their life would be like this they wouldn't have married. You think it's always about money, but it's mostly about dead bedrooms, women who suddenly fall into depression, women who don't want anything after having children, women with hormonal problems, women who suddenly find their man repulsive, or women who are seeing someone else and giving nothing to their husband, saving it for the new boyfriend. If you don't believe me, just watch the advice of the next woman in a video. So why don't people leave instead of having an affair? Well, it's a myth that people are so deeply unhappy with the relationship that that's why they have an affair. Usually people have affairs because they do not feel good and they're in pain and they're looking for a painkiller. And specifically, the pain is something related to they're struggling with something, right? They might have some depression, they might have some anxiety, they might have some trauma that was recently triggered. The relationship might be rocky, but not terrible and them wanting to leave. And then there's usually a third factor that's sort of happening at the same time, which is something that's some kind of trauma or trigger that recently happened that put them in this place where they're in so much pain, they really are going out to look for this painkiller. So they don't want to leave the relationship necessarily. They're not particularly unhappy with the relationship. Many people still say they love their partners and still cheat. In what world is cheating on me or hurting me beneficial for me in a relationship? Brothers, a woman who cheats does so because she lacks something with you. I've always believed that there are three types of cheating by a woman. First, there's the woman who leaves an average man for a richer man. This is the woman who cheats due to hypergamy, for money, or because the man is a loser. The second type of cheating occurs when you are a man who constantly cheats on her, and she gets tired and decides to cheat on you for revenge or to make you experience what you did to her. The third type of cheating, which to me is the most painful, is when you are a hardworking man, you put her in a good position, treat her with love, give her everything, respect her, in short, you are a man in a healthy marriage, and yet she cheats on you. You know why it hurts more? Because she doesn't leave you for a better man. She didn't cheat because you're bad. She did it because the other man makes her feel better than you do. She did it because he is the man she genuinely loves, or due to her lack of values. That's why, brothers, a man who forgives infidelity is only covering up a ticking time bomb that will explode later. It always ends up being when she gets pregnant by Chad and pins the child on the beta provider. I entered my rich girl era the day I moved out of my ex-husband's house, which was technically my house, but he stayed there, you know. Well, I was living in my sister's basement with all three of my kids in one room because he wouldn't move into his aunt's house who had plenty of room for my kids and him to stay while well, we went through this process. But no, no, I had to move out anyways. That's water under the bridge. I stood in my convictions, walked into a therapist's office with 
$500 of cash. I had $1,000 to my name and I handed it to him. I said, it's your job to help make sure I never do this again. And he was like, no, you, you can't give me this. You can't give me this envelope. You can pay per session. I'm like, no, that was the first time I ever fucking put the money down and was like, I'm working on myself. I was desperate. Okay. I don't think you need to be desperate to find help. Rock bottom is overrated, but there we were. I entered my rich girl era that day because it was the day that I was like, no more compromise, no more, no, no more putting all of myself into relationship, into things that aren't giving me a return on my investment. There are many things in your life that can take away an ROI from you. There's bitterness, anger, resentment. We've got the emotional output, right? We've got friendships that are full of drama that are talk, like taking all of this away from you. You've got your ex messaging you and you're spiraling every time he messages you and you do want it for 24 hours instead of being able to work through that or focus on working through that so that when he messages you, it's like, yeah, transaction, right? Your life has only so much time, energy, and attention. And it's up to you to decide where you decide to invest that. It is a decision. As somebody who's been building businesses for decades, because that's what I did at third grade, I was making dream catcher earrings, going door to door to teachers and selling them to building corporations, startups, those types of things to building my own business. I can tell you that your time, energy, and attention are critical in living the life that you want to live. So if you're not experiencing exactly what you want, if you are like, this is not what I want for myself, you can change that. You can change it. Sometimes you just have to look at it a different way. I'm gonna teach you exactly how to do that in my Rich Girl Era training and 30 day challenge so I can get your feet, your little feet moving. It's gonna be great. If you wanna join it, you can head to my profile. I would love to see you there. Get in the car. Let's go. She entered her rich girl face, giving advice to women on how to ruin a man. The hatred she harbors from her past experiences is so strong that she gives legal advice to women on how to take money from their ex-husbands. This is what you call turning your trauma into your life's purpose. So, I wonder, why do you always see women saying they're tired of giving their all in the relationship, and then you hear them making videos talking badly about their ex-husband? Why do they create an entire narrative channel talking about how bad it was to be married to that man? I wonder what these men must feel if they harbor some hatred from so many videos claiming they were the devil, don't you think, brothers? Another thing, that therapists should have refunded her money because they didn't help. They scammed her. She's still crazy about her ex-husband. She should get her money back. Brothers, remember that the woman's story will always be about the bad guy. Don't be fools. Get legal advice before getting married so they can't take everything you've worked for, like this man did with this woman. He didn't manage to take her house and assets. What I did when my affair partner was with his family during the holidays is I used it as time to craft a plan of... Welcome, brothers. In today's video, we will see a woman who tells us how happy she is in her relationship with Chad. She explains how being the mistress of this man makes her happy. We will see the reaction of many women, even those from the Pacific, to this woman's video for being Chad's mistress. Before moving forward, brothers, we want your support in achieving our goal for the coming months of reaching 50,000 subscribers. We want our family to keep growing, so support us with your like and subscription. Don't forget to leave us your comments. Without further ado, let's begin. To be fair, I felt fairly emotionally and financially supported. I felt like my affair partner was available for me most of the year, maybe except for birthdays and of course the freaking holidays. It really felt like a piece of my heart was missing because it was. He still did really good about seeing me like Christmas morning, things like that. But it just was not the same because I had to go home without a partner. Like, you know, my mom was like, aren't you dating someone? Where are they? I'm like, they're with their wife. How do you explain that? Um, communication often slowed down. They were less available. And that was when I really felt like 
a mistress or an outsider or not enough. So I'm hoping that you ladies are taking care of yourself. When I, I miss when it was okay to keep some personal business. Brothers, I have always told you that women prefer to share an alpha man rather than date a beta man. This woman is dating a Chad, a man who brings nothing to the table except his seed, a man who makes her feel emotions, a man who only has fun with her, occasionally taking care of her needs. See how this woman says, he supports me emotionally and financially. This man is in a good position and is simply practicing open hypergamy. He has a wife with whom he wants to share his life and a mistress with whom he has fun. Now, I wonder where the solidarity among women is. That's why I always say the worst enemy of a woman is another woman. This girl has been commented on, insulted, to the point that she deleted the original video. The funniest thing is, she made a TikTok channel talking about the benefits of being the other woman. This will become normal, where now every rule or social concept people just disregard, nothing matters anymore. That's why, brother, I tell you, the man in that top 20% is faithful because he chooses to be, because he has plenty of options. Modern women are okay with being the other woman. As I said, they prefer to be lovers of Chad than girlfriends of simps. Okay, fair. I felt fairly emotionally and financially supported. I felt like my fair partner was available for me most of the year, maybe except for birthdays and of course the freaking holidays. It really felt like a piece of my heart was missing because it was. She goes on to say that only in those times she felt like a mistress because other than that, he made time for her. And you know what's completely mind-blowing to me about this entire situation is do these people not have good friends or family that love them? Because who goes on social media and admittedly posts that they are the other women and trying to receive some validation in that behavior or build a community of other women? It gives me almost like those pedo community vibes you know the community that they try to make that it's okay and it's normal to be attracted to uh little kids and shit like that it's really fucking weird it's weird fucking energy it also brings to mind that narrative that some people try to say that oh the husband is the one that owes you the loyalty not the other woman and yeah that is in fact very fucking true however there are women like this one that exists that are out there that intentionally do this and they continue to have an affair with the married man I give the women grace that had no idea that the man was married, that they find out later. They had no idea that they were the other woman. But at some point, there has to be some accountability for these types of women too, because they're parading around proud of what they do and creating social media content around this fantasy life. It's irresponsible and unhealthy. And this is the reason that men feel that they can do whatever they want to do to us, because there's women like that, that have no fucking girl code and no ethic and no moral compass. But let me tell you, todo se paga en la vida. You will reap what you sow. Keep thinking you're cute if you're one of these ones. You go fucking learn. Brothers, women have a lot of mixed feelings about this because it's similar to the situation where a serious, working man finds out his better half is sleeping with another man who isn't half the man her husband is. Society is becoming like this, where it's either you do it to me or I do it to you first. This is because of the lack of values, the absence of a father in the home to teach women to be responsible. Like she says, there are women who, upon realizing they are the other woman, leave that man. Others continue, and others, like the girl in the video, love this role. A man who takes care of me financially, but doesn't burden me with his care, where I only have to attend to him, love him, and give him a lot of affection, nothing more. Now, I wonder, everyone blames this woman for selling this fantasy life. But these are the same women who opened up the concept of the sugar daddy, young women going out with older men, just for benefits. Or women selling their dignity for economic benefits behind a screen. No matter how you paint it, it's still the oldest profession in the world, just with small and different markets. But in the end, the benefit is the same, economic. So, brothers, remember, if there's a market, it's because there's a demand. <laughs> so this... I felt fairly emotionally and financially supported. I felt like my affair partner was available for me most of the year. And this. Could you imagine if moms brought the same kind of energy that dads bring to parenting their kids? This comment. So HCR tech guy said in all caps, he does not care about anything to do with kids. He lets the woman do it. And she goes on to say, and guess what? Your kids will not care about you. Which is what I hope for HCR tech guy. But he is acknowledging that he is making a choice 
not to participate in his family. Just as her boyfriend still did really good about seeing me like Christmas morning things can choose to be there for her instead of his wife the woman who she acknowledges is doing all the emotional labor in the house in other words men can choose when they want to and currently the family structures and patriarchy has set it up so they can make these choices but the thing is society is changing more and more children are going no contact so the guys who decide to opt out of their family lives in their children's youth will find in their old age they're pretty lonely similarly a lot of women know that divorce and guys cheating is common and so they are opting out of marriage and the thing is lots of men can say oh you're gonna become a cat lady but a lot of studies show that unmarried women are incredibly happy because they don't have to put up with husbands or mistresses. <laughs> Here we see another Catwoman who isn't in a relationship and has hit the wall, giving advice. If women were so happy, they wouldn't be commenting on other people's relationships, don't you think, brothers? Because if she's commenting on others' relationships, it means she's not investing her time in being as happy as they claim to be while being single. Now, what entertains me about this is that they all blame men and the patriarchy for not allowing them. As if a woman needs a man to tell her, the patriarchy allows you to be my mistress. That woman wants to be the mistress. She likes the idea of being the other woman, just to get the benefits without taking on the burden. She doesn't want children or anything, just a man to entertain her in bed, listen to her, but then leave after a few hours. Regarding feeling lonely in old age, I must say that everyone chooses their own path. You can choose to marry and have children, be the provider father, but that doesn't guarantee that tomorrow your wife won't ask for a divorce just because she's bored and wants to have fun with Chad. Or that you spend your whole life working and two years before retirement, your wife asks for a divorce to keep all your assets, to avoid having to take care of you in old age. You know, everyone ends up alone. Only a minority dies with a wife, and it's almost always their second or third marriage. So, knowing this, why do you think I tell you to be a man who works for excellence? Because a man who brings a lot to the table, who takes care of himself, is a man that a woman doesn't want to leave. the affair, I felt fairly emotionally and financially supported. I felt like my affair partner was a I'm speechless of what to say, but um, let me tell you what happened in certain countries. If you are the mistress, because there will be lessons bring to you personally by the wives, they will do anything in any extent without being like severely illegal to protect their families. So, like, like, like guys, you're having it too easy in certain countries because I've seen on the other side, like the internet helping the wives, you'll get publicly humiliated. Your address, your home, your work, your parents, the like names, like everything would get released and you will just get I cannot, like, in my vocabulary, there's nothing I can describe the, the humiliations and the things that would happen to you. And I'm just like a, another internet observer of all of these actions happening. Because with the internet these days, everything get live streams and like all the dramas that happening on the street get straight live stream and everybody sees it. And the internet always be on the wife's sides because she's in the right, even though she's doing things that I guarantee you that is wrong. This is what happened if you are a mistress taking someone's husband and destroying their family. The wife will come find you. Like some wives are really nice and polite. They will message you. They will ask you, please do not do this anymore. To some mistress, like some will stop there and everything will be fine and nice. But some won't because then the wife will eventually bust their ass, come over and then do all things possible without, you know, I'm not talking about like, like crazy stuff. I'm just talking about like they would be there, physically bullied you, verbally bullied you until you couldn't just put your face up to see the skies anymore. Seriously, things that you would happen or see in like dramas, like TV series, like chili powder rubs it on your private part or stinky sores splash all over your face. 
splash all over your face like that's what called serious injuries but yes they do it they do it in real life they when they are angry they will do anything to protect their family in their home so like that's not to be joked with that's not to be like getting you're gonna get serious support after any of that happened so like it's very clear in those certain countries that you do not do that do not be the other woman because because they are gonna be people do that to you like the gangster stuff that they just ordinary people but once shit hits the fans like it's it's not ordinary anymore it's literally what comes out of dramas so i hope that the support groups works and you guys get the support that you need in any sort of way and protect yourself out there because obviously i've seen none of that happening in the us australia or you know certain countries but but on the, other, on the other side, I've seen that happening in, in like crazy speed, happening in real life. Like your face will get destroyed. So um, protect yourself, guys. Good luck. Have a nice day. Brothers, the irony here is that when a man doesn't bring much to the table and a woman knows he has a mistress, she leaves him, saying he can stay with that trash. But when the man is wealthy, keeps her comfortable, supports her emotionally and financially, and has assets and physical appearance. When she discovers he has a mistress, she blames the other woman for trying to intrude into her marriage and steal her husband. <laughs> this is funny because, as I tell you, women prefer to share an alpha man than settle for a beta man. A woman with an alpha tolerates everything, which is why you see women in their 30s or 35s becoming alpha widows. They give their youth to a man who turns them into mistresses, but as mistresses, they gain substantial benefits from this man, whether it's trips, cars, money, or even apartments. That's why after they are left, you see these women raising their standards. This is because they dated wealthy men who had fun with them in their prime. They believe in their 30s or 35s, after hitting the wall, that they deserve another high-value man. That's why later on, they find it hard to accept a simp or a beta provider who doesn't shower them with luxuries, ending up as alpha widows. When I was in the affair, I felt fairly emotionally and financially supported. I felt like my affair partner was available for me most of the year, maybe except for birthdays and of course the freaking holidays. He still did really good about seeing me like Christmas morning, things like that, but it just was not the same because I had to go home without a partner. Communication often slowed down, they were less available, and that was when I really felt like a mistress or an outsider or not enough. When you mess with a married man, you're going to get February 15th. You're going to get December 26th. You're going to be an afterthought because that man is not leaving his wife and his family. For a man to get you to agree with uh, being a party to infidelity, he has to paint the wife as the villain in his story. But no matter how bad she is, though, he still can't seem to leave. I said it before and I'll say it again, women like you actually keep the man in the marriage. He is looking for 20%. It's the 80-20 rule all over again. So he's coming to you for that 20%. That man's never going to leave that woman. You're keeping him in the relationship because now he finally feels whole with the two of you together. That man is treating you like a dessert. He goes to the wife for actual nutrients. She's one who keeps him fed. But when he wants some empty calories, that's when he comes to you for a little something sweet at the end of the night. You are better and more than somebody's dessert, more than somebody's something to do. You, your bed is cold. That woman has a man next to her every single night. He might be a raggedy one, whether she knows it or not. But you're sharing this man. You will never get the kind of treatment that you crave as long as you're sharing this woman's husband. How could she not get the treatment she wants if she's emotionally and financially stable? That woman is at the finish line, just receiving the benefits. Of course, with great power comes great responsibility. She knows her days are February 13th or 15th, December 23rd or 26th, but I assure you, on Three Kings Day, she still receives her gifts even as an adult. <laughs> Do you think women are foolish? Women know what they are doing. They understand what they are doing to the other woman. Today's woman doesn't want to take responsibility, which is why she created a channel to talk about being a mistress. As I said, if there's a market, it's because there's a demand. That TikTok is growing quickly because many women are content with being the other woman. It's ironic that everyone complains, but I once saw a video of a man who said he found a married man's ring. Whenever he went to a bar or a nightclub, he would wear this ring. He said that women were more attracted to him, knowing he was married, 
and he even slept with several who later got angry when he told them it was just a ring he found. What does this tell you? Many enjoy the thrill of the forbidden, that which they can't have. So, if you ask one in ten women, five have been involved with a married man. No coincidence. She says it's the worst thing in the world, but still, everyone tries it at least once, often in their twenties. If you forbid something to a woman, that's when she most wants to do it. But in their thirties, they come with the speech of don't do it, of course, brothers, because tomorrow it might be their husband who has a mistress in her twenties. That's why I tell you, the worst enemy of a woman is another woman. Welcome brothers, in today's video, I want to show you the thoughts of some women on what a relationship with a man is like, from the perspective of a Christian woman, to a woman who comes from a disastrous family, to a third woman who speaks the truth that many men keep silent in their marriage. Don't miss this video because it's quite revealing. Before we go on, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and leave us a comment. Brothers, we now have Super Chat active, so if you want to support this project, those contributions would help us a lot. Without further ado, let's begin. Hey friends, this is for the one who's standing for their marriage, but they feel weak and they want to give up. You know, marriage is difficult and I assume it's taken years to bring your marriage to the point that it is today, to the point that separation has been spoken of or even divorce. Change is not going to happen overnight. It's going to take time. So please don't give up. If you love your spouse, regardless of what they put you through, don't give up on them. You know what? God is doing something in and through the pain that you're feeling today. But you know what, friend? If you give up right now, you'll never see what God is preparing you for, which is something more beautiful than your heart could even fathom. Don't give up. God bless. Marriage is something very difficult to manage, both for the man and the woman, because they are two different thinking individuals coming together for a lifetime. But in these times, where we are accustomed to having everything easily, to dopamine addiction, to everything needing to be as fast as possible, and to planned obsolescence, we are developing the idea that if we don't like something anymore, we change it or look for something better. This greatly affects women, with things like TikTok and Instagram, where the idea of having thousands of suitors is sold, where they constantly receive messages saying they are worth a lot, where they keep hearing that everything a man does is to harm, deceive, or benefit himself individually. This turns marriage into a battlefield. This leads to increased distrust in both individuals. This is evident when women leave a marriage for simple reasons like being bored, not feeling excitement, or thinking the grass is always greener, similar to men who do not respect the commitment, abandon their families or fall into vices that make them weak like adult content. Therefore, it's difficult in these times to keep your relationship and yourself as a person away from these influences. This starts from home. If you don't believe me, watch the following video. Even when you have a child, that is your baby, not his child. Now, at the end of the day, that is your baby that you're going to have to provide for. And let me tell you how it is not just black women telling this. This is women across the board who started communicating and telling the younger girls and women around them to be able to stand in this society for yourself. I love that video. Go watch the whole thing. And that's 100% correct. I grew up in the South to a very conservative white woman who was left by her husband to raise two kids on her own so he could go marry a younger woman. And despite the fact that I had like purity culture drilled into me from a young age and you know all like the whiteness and the passive aggressive and ha 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 everything's fine that is not the message i got behind closed doors my mom was a different person to the outside world and inside inside she was like don't ever expect a man to take care of you <laughs> she taught me how to mow the fucking lawn she taught me how to balance a checkbook she put me on birth control the second I got a boyfriend. I was like, we're not even having sex. She's like, I don't care. I'm not raising your baby. She drilled it into my head from the day I can remember that a child would ruin my fucking life and that I cannot depend on men. That was the message. God. Believe me, this woman cannot be blessed because she ruined another woman. 
Then she wonders why a father figure is necessary. This is a woman who came from a household of pain. While I share the message of the first woman about a woman needing to understand that her child is hers, she must learn to take responsibility with the man with whom she has children. This is a clear message, because if she has a child with a chad, a man who brings nothing to the table but his seed, he may abandon her. But if her man is good and dies, it's also her responsibility. But back to this woman, her mother was a lady in society but a nightmare at home. She ended up making her daughter the man who was missing in the home, making her too independent, implanting a chip in her brain that a child would ruin her life. She ended up getting married at 42 to a man who likes dressing as a woman and will never have a child. That is the woman who needs a blessing. Do you think if that woman saw the final product of her creation, a woman who hates men, has an effeminate husband, and leaves no descendants, she might have chosen a different path? But let's continue. <laughs> Message. God bless this woman. And you know what? I don't know much about my grandmothers, but I know for a fact that one of them, that one on my dad's side, was straight up being held hostage. She fucking hated her husband. He beat her. She had an affair with the neighbor for 20 years. Had a child with him that everybody knew was the neighbor's child except him. It's still a secret. Don't tell anyone. And he refused to give her a divorce. And at her fucking funeral, this southern white man who was incredibly racist had the audacity to say, free at last, free at last, thank God almighty I'm free at last. At her funeral. And to quote, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And then he also said, I'm king of the mountain now. Ha, ha, ha. And then he married another woman, and Billy stole all his fucking money. Good for you, Billy. I loved my grandfather, but apparently he was a terrible man. Not to me, but to the women in his life. My other grandmother fucking hated her husband. I don't know why. Nobody talks about it, but they hated each other. I had never seen a happy marriage in real time in a household until I got in one. And I was like, wow, this is what it's supposed to be like. But like that creator says, women do all the emotional labor in the family. Women are the secret keepers. Women are the ones who've been warning each other. The men don't fucking pay attention. If they're not the predator themselves, they're not paying attention. They don't care. They just don't want to know. But the women, even the ones who enable these men, oftentimes are still warning us. Thank fucking God. <laughs> this is why I say that men should do DNA tests. Back then, they probably didn't have them. But brother, test your children, even if you don't tell your wife. Just do it. You might be in for a pleasant or bitter surprise. But getting back to the topic, disastrous people only leave disastrous people in the world. This woman comes from a dysfunctional family, now claims to be in a happy marriage, but all she does is spread a message of hatred against men. I think it's partly because she hit the wall hard. And believe me, the wall doesn't forgive, especially since she doesn't even have children. But I want you to see what disastrous marriages are like. One makes bad decisions one after another. This idea that the woman does everything right and only the man is bad is what they say when the man leaves them, tired of their abuses. If you doubt what I'm saying, watch the following video. This woman clearly explains why many men leave toxic women and marriages, even when they have children. Uh, oh, oh. So I know we don't talk about this often, but you know there are so many toxic women out there damaging good men and ruining marriages, yes? I mean, many of us so men, Turina and Pisa and B. Yes, I understand we have different core needs in relationships, but I think we tend to forget that men too are human beings and that they do have emotions. I mean, just check yourself, right? You're always right. You're so disrespectful. You humiliate your partner among his friends and family. Eh? You take him for granted as if you did him a favor being with him in a relationship. You're not supportive. So you never apologize for anything at all. Yeah. You know the kind of uh, the, the kind of woman who always blames the man for their behavior. Yeah, that woman. For some reason, it's always because Daddy Jaden did this or that and it pushed you to abuse him. As in, for every toxic behavior you have, your man's character must have provoked you or something. To us, I want a man who can provide a legal oriented, a man I can grow with. But we're also the same woman who say, you do your things privately. My men will embarrass you. So we expect the man to build with us, to build for both of us. As we work on our personal projects on the side, come on, guys. 
a healthy marriage is a partnership you all have to be team players and you need to learn to check in with each other i think if you can't trust your partner to have your back in that way you shouldn't be with them in the first place it is not fair to expect your man to show up for you yet you never do the same for him let me remind you that to treat a man well you need to give him the same kind of respect love kindness understanding that you would want as well whatever he lacks you got him yeah? it doesn't make him less of a man if he gets a setback assure him you'll be in his corner until you both make a absolutely many men married for love but were deceived for reasons like you didn't give me enough attention men who work eight to ten hours a day to support their family especially their wives only to receive the unpleasant surprise of a woman who enters the house fighting, complaining, belittling him, making him feel like worthless trash. That's why they get upset when a man has a mistress who treats him like a king, while his wife shames him for everything he does, even though she has never worked with him and has always done everything for her own benefit. This is the reality, brothers. Just listen to women's divorce speeches. From the start of the relationship, they begin saving in a hidden account from their husband, buying properties in their mother's name, marrying men only to seek a profitable divorce. Brothers, remember that on the wedding day, only the man marries for love, the woman for a lifestyle. Let's continue. Be his backbone. Be his peace. Keep him motivated. Don't doubt him. Don't talk down on his achievements. Don't compare him to other men. However little. Some men tend to suppress their emotions and struggle to open up because, I mean, some of us ladies can be very dismissive of the fact that these men have feelings. Eh? We often fail to recognize how our dysfunctional behavior patterns destroy the safety of our men. So I need you to ask yourself today, do you seek your man's advice over whatever your mom or your bestie says? Do you support your husband over because he's the man, he must have his stuff figured out? Hmm? Do you express gratitude for the little things he does for you? Or why you make him feel like hmm? Do you create a safe space for him to be vulnerable? Hmm? To speak up? Or are those women who keep saying that he's a man, let him man up? Hmm? Do you respect him? Do you understand him? Do you protect his honor? Do you ever surprise him, show compassion, or do something nice for him? Hmm? By the way, deep down we know some of our friends, sisters, colleagues, or even our mothers are hell on earth they are very toxic so i'll give you an example right there is this one lady that i heard of who would constantly insult the husband in the presence of his children his friends family and sometimes she would even throw plates and cups at him but you see having been taught that a man should always be the bigger person this guy kept cool for days weeks months years and then one day he woke up took a shower walked out of the house and never came back he had had it but guess what she said this man was so irresponsible. He was a deadbeat dad. I mean, he walked out on her and the children into the arms of his side chicks. And guess what? Society believed her because, I mean, <laughs> she's the lady. She's the weaker gender, right? And then the man was cursed. And all his ancestors, I mean, how dare he walk out on his wife and children? Or he could even remain pretty a good father after the separation. Pay school fees, promptly send upkeep, send money, and whatever is expected of him as a father. But a toxic woman will do everything in her power to screw up this man's life, send him insults at midnight, stalk the new woman in his life, keep changing schools so that he can, you know, just disrupt the guy's peace, slander him on social media. Man, you know why? Because women are always right, yeah? But hey, a marriage can only work if you're both responsible for the energy you bring into the environment. So, you want your marriage to work, and you should check how you're treating your husband. Seriously, these men go through a lot, and we need to learn to be empathetic towards them. Check yourself. Sometimes you're the toxic person, you hurt people, you need to do better, learn. Wow, applause to this woman. She spoke the whole truth, brothers. Do you know how many men just endure until one day they simply say, I'm leaving, to hell with everything? Men who have been destroyed on social media, as we see in videos of women claiming their ex-husbands are the devil on earth. Then, like feminists seeking them out, they try to ruin their lives and jobs just because these men left a toxic woman who was ruining their lives. Men who have been scarred for life, traumatized, not wanting to ever marry again because a woman turned their life into hell, even isolating them from friends. Men who, even after leaving these women, continue to support them, giving money to their children, 
while these women from hell keep ruining their lives, preventing them from seeing their children, or trying to ruin any future relationships, or worse, going to their house, harming themselves, or falsely accusing them of harm, all because they refused to accept responsibility. Men who married for love wanted to keep fighting in their marriage, even when they had a woman who cheated on them time and again, still enduring their betrayals. Or those who saw the woman they loved and gave everything to, standing in front of a judge, tearfully accusing them of living a nightmare, even falsely accusing them of physical abuse. Men who watch their wives associate with toxic women, be it friends or family, and see how their wives change from one week to another, turning the home into a total hell when they did nothing to cause it. Brothers, what we men keep silent, letting many women ruin our lives, just enduring and being cast as the villains. That's why I make this video, to carry this message about how men should protect themselves from women who are ruining good men. I am so done with this women sip meme chat. <laughs> women. The sentence don't objectify women has women as the object of the sentence. Stop! <laughs> Welcome, brothers. In today's video, we'll see frustrated single women criticizing aspects of married women's lives, which they find annoying because they believe it's enforced by the patriarchy, while married women themselves are not bothered by this. Before we go on, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and leave us a comment. Brothers, we now have Super Chat active, so if you want to support this project, your contributions would be greatly appreciated. Without further ado, let's get started. Weddings and babies and wine. Weddings and babies and wine. Oh, I'm a female character written by men, so I also only care about weddings and babies and wine. Oh, excuse me, I have to go call my husband and get mad about something stupid no one would ever actually be mad about. Of course, go ahead. It's been several minutes without a joke about women being needy and paranoid. Ah, <gasps> oh, this is the insulting social construct that movies and TV teach us is realistic. Where are you? What are you doing? It's time to grow up and sell the motorcycle and your other favorite things that I hate just because I police your fun. Have you trapped a man with no self-agency who's way less attractive than you into a commitment yet? <laughs> no, no, I'm important boss woman who's about to realize all she really wants is weddings and babies and wine. <laughs> she mocks the woman who chooses the path of a family, always saying that the pattern or a character written by a man, of course, because a man can only write characters where you are either the housewife or the empowered single boss. Why is this the case? Simply because a woman is just choosing one of these two paths, or the third, living as an addict to something. It's like if you ask a woman what the role of a man is, they all say he's the provider or the entrepreneur. But a man is also the builder, the soldier, the president, the street cleaner. Why does a man have so many roles? Because in real life, a man risks all of that. Just look at the recent superheroine movies where even women don't like being that strong character because they all fail at the box office. The irony is, she made that video as an insult to men. In the comments of the same video, many women said they'd prefer to have babies, wine, and weddings. Many also wrote about how they were the boss and regret it because their life is lonely. Others said that when they were the boss, they got exhausted from having so much responsibility. What irony, brothers. It seems being the character who stays at home with the babies is actually the role that all want to play. So, point for the patriarchy. I have been married only eight months and I have really tried to refrain from giving marriage advice or anything like that because I cannot stand. Like, one time I saw this girl get married and like four weeks after she put out this long post of all these things that she learned in marriage and I was like, girl, like, be FFR, like, be for, be for real. But I also don't want to be like fake and give people a wrong perception of marriage as if it's like all perfect year especially your first year and like it's all rainbows and butterflies and like it's no struggle because that's not the case either and honestly marriage is really freaking hard like for real you're taking two imperfect people two people who were raised completely differently probably and you're putting them together and you expect nothing to go wrong you expect everything to be perfect yeah no you're human you're gonna have disagreements you're gonna view things differently you're gonna have to work out different things of how you communicate different ways that you clean like just stuff like that everyday stuff and then really serious issues too that like you might not have known like while you were dating i just think it's really easy for creators specifically to like get on social media and put on this perfect persona like everything's great and they never have issues 
but like that's just not reality and i hope that like my page can always be a page of honesty that's what i started it as and that's what i will continue to do but um marriage is hard okay i did a video the other day talking about the friends that you have in marriage and specifically the ones that you're reaching out to is so important because your human side of you it might be too much to handle sometimes you want to make sure that the people who are in your circle are helping you remember why you got married in the first place and going to people who have a healthy relationship that you can learn from and so if you're in your first few years of marriage and it's hard sometimes um it's okay that's normal and so i hope that this video um, just helps you not feel as alone and helps you feel human because that's what we are and it's life and it happens. And so keep on going, keep moving forward. It's going to be okay. And if you like content like this, then give me a follow. I must say, this woman is the only one in many videos whom I can say gives honest advice because marriage isn't easy. It involves two people with differences that have to coexist. And this is more difficult today when people spend so much time alone adapting to another person. That's why it's becoming so hard for women to find a partner. Many live a single life where they can do whatever they want and then transition to a married life where there are rules. That's why marriages don't last. That's why the advice of this girl is well-intentioned, because she doesn't sell you a perfect life, nor does she talk as if she has years of experience. Unlike those smoke and mirrors dating coaches who invent ridiculous titles claiming to be specialists in something that doesn't exist just to sell you consultancy. Nor does she talk about what to do in a relationship from her imagination, because she doesn't have a relationship. I've always said you can't compare stage one of a relationship, which is love and happiness where people walk on eggshells to not upset the other, with stage 10, where you've been through different situations and still decide to be together, knowing each other's differences. Good for this woman who understands that being married to a man comes with challenges. She doesn't live blaming her happiness or unhappiness on the man. I know a lot of men out there that would love to be married again. Like they would, they would do it in a heartbeat. And I totally get it, really. I, I would love to have a wife. I mean, I know what I did as a wife. And let me tell you, it would be nice. I'm just imagining, I mean, if I had a wife, I'd come home and dinner would be cooked and all the errands would be ran and the kids would be taken care of and the house would be, you know, clean. I mean, I wouldn't say anything if it wasn't, but eventually it does get clean. She would also take care of my womanly needs. <laughs> and don't worry, I would come home, take out the trash once in a while, hire someone to mow the lawn. I'd play with the kids, make sure I had a bond with them. But I'd also have plenty of time to go hang with my friends. You know, go for a night out, cocktails. And if I wanted to have my friends over for Bonko night or something, I mean, I would have her make like her special dishes that she's really good at that all my friends really like and then she'd make sure the house was clean and I also would you know make sure that she'd have the kids all in bed and if we ever got in a pinch where we needed an extra amount of income she could do that too while also taking care of all those other things <laughs> so yeah I totally get it I mean who wouldn't want a wife <laughs> I just don't want to be one ever again that's not gonna happen Firstly, it won't happen because I doubt anyone wants a woman who's hit the wall, gone through one or several divorces, with an attitude that's not wife-like as described, and besides, we all know the wall is unforgiving, so you might as well get a cat. Secondly, she talks about the benefits of having a wife, but where are the benefits of having a husband? Do you think that if you work, you can bring to the table everything that a man does, when it's known that only when a woman is a professional with a very good job does she manage to earn at least what an average family man does? Furthermore, it's great to have a husband who covers your financial needs, who puts food on your table, buys you a house, a car, gives you a credit card, gives you access to savings, where you don't have to worry about your health insurance, car insurance, your medication, your children's medication, who pays all your expenses and those of the children, allows you to go to the gym, out to eat with friends, or to the bar at night with your friends while he stays home taking care of the kids. Besides, some men even cook better than women, do part of the house chores, and still cover your debts. But of course, the only thing that always matters is what a woman brings to the table. That's why, according to this woman, the husband is replaceable with a job. Then they wonder why they're alone. <laughs> that is so funny to me. And the reason why this is so funny to me 
is because the men getting those invitations will finally realize how women feel 99% of the time. I would take it one step further and not even put misses and just put ms dot because why not? Maybe put the woman's last name instead of the man's. Spice things up a bit. And when you get those angry guests calling you, asking why the invitations were written this way, it's going to be the best justification that the patriarchy exists. The reasoning of a woman who has never been married is this. She believes that men are affected by this, when in reality, most of these invitations are managed by the wife. The man is simply told, we have an event on such a date this month. Men don't care about this, only if they are single and their name is spelled wrong on an invitation. But what can the single woman without a man know? Believe me, for many women, one of the greatest honors is to be the wife of so-and-so, to carry his surname, or have their children bear his surname. Do you know how many men have left great legacies and their surname is synonymous with status? Do you think if these women are told that they won't have their husband's surname on the day of their wedding, that each introduction will be welcome, so-and-so, and misses with her own surname, it shows that you're not worthy to be presented as that man's wife? For a man, the surname is a legacy. That's why there are men who have achieved such success that they paid their grandchildren to keep their surname, buying the name from their daughter's husband, because they want to leave their legacy across generations and not lose their surname along the way. This is why men always want to have a son. This is why men build things to put their name on them. This is why they make donations and do works. Ask any woman who married a famous man if she wants to lose her husband's surname or not have her children bear it and see their response. I've decided that I'm going to start a series where I respond to the terrible men who say not all men or what man actually said that with proof of men who indeed actually said that. Like I always disclaim in my videos, we know that it's not all men, but it's enough of them and you just choose not to hear us when we say that because so many of you are dead set on not hearing us, instead of responding with what we've learned from our experiences as women, because we know you don't care about that, I will be responding with the words of other terrible men, because then you might listen. One of the favorite lines by men who love to discredit women is, who actually said that, or what man actually said that? And before the men come in here saying, who said that? You can see here this person is talking about how men think saying I hate men is such a vile, terrible thing to say, when some men say very, very disgusting things like this. To which this man responded, who said that exactly? Thank you for asking, let me show you. This is a video of a boy talking about our wording, his unalived female classmates in the event of a school bang bang. And just in case the proof of the exact person who said that exact thing isn't enough, let me show you the comments. The one girl that was playing dead, and the creator again, she thought she was slick. I don't need Riz in this situation, they're still warm, for real. I like them cold. They're already gone. It wouldn't even matter. The police arrive staring at you. I'm cutting in. Move over. And just in case even that wasn't enough proof of the terrible men who actually say and agree with these disgusting things, here's another man discrediting their original poster with another one of these terrible men's favorite lines. It's not all men. He says, this isn't a lot of them. You just accidentally stumbled into a cesspool of degens. He calls it extremist views and says, by a large margin, those people don't really exist. To which I will respond by saying, what the fuck are you actually talking about? This video had almost 700,000 likes and a good majority of those 12,000 comments were very similar to the ones I just showed. And I don't know about you, but if I found something this repulsive on my timeline, which actually I wouldn't because I wouldn't end up in that algorithm, which also speaks a lot for you guys. Even if I somehow came across a video with a sick joke like this, I damn sure wouldn't be leaving a like on it. And that large amount of numbers is just on one little blip of a video on this endless worldwide internet. But I do think it'll be interesting to see how the terrible men respond to me, responding to them with the words of other terrible men. It'll be my fun little science experiment. The internet is full of very bad people. But this applies to both genders, as well as the various other genders. There will always be someone resentful. Just as there are men of value, who focus on their life goals and their families without meddling in others' lives, there are also simps, men giving their attention to women who would never look their way, who despise them. But there are also hateful women. Why else do you think the term Karen was invented to describe annoying women? Why do you think magazines or celebrity gossip channels are targeted at women? Why do you think workplaces with many women are the most toxic? 
or simply, why do you think there are so many women on TikTok these days, complaining about everything? Because in these mediums, they find a place to unleash all their hatred towards men or anything that doesn't go their way. So, it's not particularly a man's thing. You said it yourself. You see many comments, though not many from men. These are the ones you actually ignore but pay attention to because, in the end, you need male validation. That's why you see that when an unattractive girl posts a photo on Instagram, she still feels unattractive, even if she gets hundreds of comments from her friends and acquaintances. She feels this way because there isn't a single comment from a man. That's what hurts them. So, stop seeking men's attention. <laughs> We've reached the end of the video, but before we go, the questions are for you. What do you think about the opinions of these women? What do you think are the benefits of having a husband? If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. Your support means the world to us and motivates us to create more content. Stay tuned for the next exciting video from The Wall.